Aromatase inhibitors are the devil. When you read the postmenopausal breast cancer studies, you see that there's all have terrible side effects. Now, when you compare the side effects of postmenopausal women with bottomed out estrogen levels and the side effects of aromatase inhibitors, they're basically identical. Why? Because in both instances, serum estradiol is zero. Well, what, what I always find striking is with some of these safer use models is that, of course, the ancillaries are thrown in right from the start. But it doesn't really, like you mentioned, there's no questioning of how can we solve this without throwing the medication at it, right? Uh, Telmasartan or ang angiotensin receptor blockers to lower blood pressure. What about the magnesium? What about the potassium? What about the hydration, the sleep apnea, the sleep quality overall? Right? All these things should be considered first before a medication is used. And of course, some of these medications have overlapping benefits, just like beta blockers. Um, but you don't have to throw a beta blocker and an angiotensin receptor blocker at it, and then maybe even an aromatized inhibitor just preventatively in case of gynecomastia. I mean, these things are used as needed when all other options have failed. Um, so that's why I found it surprising that safer use models nowadays revolve around more medications, not more intelligent design of nutrition and the lifestyle mm -hmm. when in reality it should it about well, it should be fucking about the lifestyle okay. <laughs> it's just just about taking stuff that's not what bodybuilding was about it was about training nutrition mm -hmm. and then later on some performance enhancers and ancillaries were needed so this is um it, it's very weird to be especially where i pick up the dosages of particular compounds mm -hmm. like angiotensin receptor blockers 80 milligrams per week or per day right no problem and then Aromatase inhibitors are the devil That's because when you read the postmenopausal breast uh, uh, women or the breast cancer studies, you see that there's all have terrible side effects. Now, when you compare the side effects of postmenopausal women with bottomed out estrogen levels and the side effects of aromatase inhibitors, they're basically identical. Why? Because in both instances, serum estradiol is zero. Mm -hmm. So if you take that away and you look at the studies of hormone replacement therapy where men are taking a low dose of an aromatase inhibitor, where serum estradiol is the middle to the top of the reference range, depending on uh, biofeedback and response of the patient, no adverse effects. Yep. And how many compounds out there actually lower estradiol? Right? Should we remove the zinc? Yes. Or remove the tadalafil? Or remove the nicotine? Well, nicotine, I mean, it has some nootropic benefits if you take it as a you know, a patch, but smoking should be removed. There's there's so many compounds out there that lower estradiol. Metformin lowers estradiol. Right? And in, metformin is then pushed in these safer use for yeah. medicals. <laughs> well, so I, mean, I, I find it very funny, I, I must say. What, what I like, like when we come to a discussion surrounding like aromatase and inhibition is like what you say, you're not looking to pop them as smarties of like this prophylaxis of I'm going to take 25 milligrams of aromacin every day just just in case I get high estrogen. When you look at like the clinical data of aromacin, you can get a very good understanding that 25 milligrams every three to four days is going to lower the aromatization rate by about 70%, 60 to 70%. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to take 25 milligrams every three days or four days. It just means that, you know, 25 milligrams every three to four days is a 70% reduction. Mm -hmm. You go to 12 and a half milligrams. Now that's 30% reduction. You've got a way of controlling the aromatization rate quite predictably than, you know, someone turn around and say, oh, well, let's add in 150 milligrams of Mastron to control your high estrogen when you don't know how much of that molecule is going to interact with the aromatase enzyme, how much of it's mm. going to be excreted. Uh, it's, I get that side of things where it's like, well, you could just add in more androgens because of the evilness of AIs. But when you really debunk that argument, when you get down to the nitty gritty argument of AIs versus another steroid, Aromas and exemestane is basically the same structure as baldenone, mm -hmm. aside from the C7 uh, substituent. Yeah. So you're literally like you're taking something that is steroidal to block aromatase specifically. So your argument of adding in mastron or preen bone is defunct once you say aromas is a steroid backbone, very similar yeah. to baldenone. And Baldenone has a metabolite known as arimistane, which is being sold as an over-the-counter pro-hormone. Yep. But in reality, it was just 
an aromatase inhibitor that was uh, what a suicide inhibitor also gets stuck in the aromatase enzyme just like a remediate or aromasin and and basically rendering it inactive um yep. so it's it's but then of course you can say that boldenone due to its oxidative stress is kidney toxic and that brings us back to the oxidative stress which there's also scientific evidence that shows that you need the oxidative stress otherwise you blunt the post exercise stress response and then it's less anabolic all right so now people think that they need the oxidative stress they need to forego the post workout vitamin c vitamin e fish oil glutathione etc or taurine right there's so many things that are antioxidants melatonin methylene blue whatever they're trying to forego all of that and then as a result of that we have a lot of bodybuilders in chronic oxidative stress um literally looking like ashtrays in the face yeah the aging and the aging is a big thing when even those are all running yeah. It's running the safe for use protocols. And even to back up for a second, using the right drug for the right thing. So the, the ARB usage stemmed from the water retention that was from estrogen. So instead of addressing mm -hmm. the estrogen, they were addressing downstream what was occurring, right? To try to just block the water instead of managing the estrogen issue, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the same, no, like you're God saying, forbid you, was, God forbid yeah. you actually control your estrogen, right? Because <laughs> apparently an estradiol of 200 in men is clearly very anabolic. That's why women yeah. tend to be very muscular. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it raises IGF-1, right, in animal models. Yeah, yeah. because they're missing a binding protein that, that we seem to have is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what I'm waiting for patiently is for the systemic wide stem use of dopamine reuptake inhibitors uh, because of they're allowing their estrogen to go so high that serotonin is so high in their brain that dopamine <laughs> goes the opposite way with the seesaw. Um, you know, you've already got potentially a subset of these models where SSRIs are becoming, you know, you know, it's not to say that you can't use an SSRI. And I know from watching your video, Steve, you, mm -hmm. you definitely have to modulate that as well in terms of a fine balance between dopamine and serotonin, yeah. but knowing full well how estrogen influences serotonergic transmission versus dopamine. There could be, you know, you're going to go guys going out and buying antipsychotics to try and drive their dopamine level up because of their brain chemistry is off. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. They're changing that. They're chasing that trend blown high. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's literally, a, you know, a psychoactive drug, basically. You know, it's nothing in the clinical literature regarding psychoactive. But I mean, I'm, I'm running 25 milligrams trend blown per week now after not having taken it for close to a decade. And I did my Tremblone deep dive. I figured 25 milligrams per week is, is the disassociation dose between anabolism and androgenic response at 100, kilos, 100 kilograms body weight, based on the private discussion we had, mm -hmm. um, me and Dr. Dean, um, on how to interpret the Hershberger bioassays, which were updated with the new standardized version. So I went through all of those, uh, the research, right? I combined it and I figured, you know what? It seems that. Uh, Trimbalone is nine times or 8.8 .8 times more anabolic than androgenic at 25 milligrams when you're 100 kilograms, based on animal studies using highly dubious extrapolation. Did I get great results? Absolutely. Did I get a dopaminergic response? Absolutely. People are telling me on the vigorous Q&A and based on my videos that my behavior has changed. So imagine if you run your Trimbalone sky high and then let your estradiol run sky high. Which you can't even detect your estradiol because Tremblone detects as estradiol yeah. on your blood work. So yeah. what, what is Tremblone? What is estradiol? Uh, Kurt, you mentioned to me that Tremblone is built off estrogen. Mm -hmm. Can you go into depth of that? Well, it's it's just an e strain steroid. So we start with the the nineteen mm -hmm. nors. It's easier to start with estrogen rather than mm -hmm. start with testosterone and reduce. It's easier to to go up from estrogen. Um, when you just look at the structure, that's just that's just how 19 nors were. Basically, we arrived at them. I don't think I don't believe AJ Birch, the guy who invented Nandrolone, I don't believe that's how he started. I think he started with testosterone and was modifying mm -hmm. it. But I think over time it's just become more apparent that it's easier to go that direction. So how many steps are there in between estradiol and trimbolone? Is there uh, five steps of why? I mean, look. That would be that would be funny. Not how, stuff you're gonna long? do at home. This is not stuff you're going to do in your bathtub at home. No, not too bad. No. But you can you can reduce Phenoplex tablets. You could do that, sure. <laughs> Except the new Revlar stuff you can because the polymer. Good luck melting the plastic. 
Oh, wow. I never really looked into this this bathtub approach of how to extract Tremblone without the estradiol from the river or S and, and other formulation tablets. Yeah, we, well, the, back in the day, they had the steer and the heifer ones, right? So you would just use the heifer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, a lot of guys made that mistake. They would use the steer thinking that, well, oh, that's for a male cow. I'm going to use the steer one. And then they would wonder why they get gyno almost immediately yeah. from it. Yeah, that's the one that has the estradiol in it. Yeah. And then pretty high dose. And the weird thing is in, in the animal models, they use, you know, a couple implants in the inner, in the ear mm -hmm. four months before they get slaughtered. And they make phenomenal gains. But when you break the milligram dosages down, it's like two milligrams per week. 